Sunday of the third month of 2021. We have 199 days left in this year before we turn over to 2022. Imagine that, 66 days have already gone by. Time is fleeting, time is short, and those of us who believe in the Lord is on his way. And so let us not waste any time, and let us just spend these next few moments giving all praise and glory to God as we fellowship one with another today. And so I invite you to join in our call to worship as the deer panteth for the waters. Please stand. As we continue, I'm going to ask Sister Princess if she will do our prayer of invocation. Jehovah my God, the one and only true God, all of those who were blessed with the breath of life this morning should get down on their knees and say thank you. Thank you to see the rising of the sun this precious day. Jehovah, as your word go out this morning, I pray that all of those will heed the word, the word that we must come to you, those who haven't come to you before. Bless all hearts, that their hearts will be open to your word this morning, Jehovah. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Our first hymn of the morning is number 200, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name.
Amen. And who are we going to crown Lord of all? Jesus is the one. All hail the power of Jesus' name. None other. Amen. It's time for our pastoral prayer, and we invite Pastor Moss to come and lead us in that. If you have any prayer requests, you may stand unless you urgently need to verbalize them. So we're going to invite Pastor Moss to come as we sing. Do we have a prayer song? Sweet Hour of Prayer is our prayer song as Pastor Moss comes. Good morning, everybody. Those who are here in the sanctuary and those out there in Zoom land, especially good morning. I like that song you all sang, man. All hail the power. Let me say this before I pray that I believe that's the song that everybody's going to sing when they get there. I can imagine seven million or billion people standing up and with the trumpets bearing and, and all the instruments and the music singing. All hail the power. I just feel I'm in heaven right now. Let's pray. Father and our God, we thank you so much for the inspiration you have given to songwriters based on your word. And as we come in your holy presence, remember your name is holy as we sang. There's power in your name. There is forgiveness. There's healing in your name. As we come, we ask you to forgive us of our sins. We stand in your presence as the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We come asking for your mercy and grace. And in his name, we stand. Uh, this has been a very difficult year for so many persons. And I don't know if anyone in this congregation has any special requests that we normally verbalize. But we know that you know our hearts. Lord, there are many people who are torn and broken in spirit, not only in this church, but family members who may not even be here. The hurts cannot be measured, not only in the Bahamas, but in the whole world. To say this is a difficult time is really an understatement, God, but we don't have to inform you we come to ask for your mercy and your grace and your love. Even as we commemorate today the death and burial of Jesus Christ that most all Baptists do at this first Sunday, we are standing here only because you made the way. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross. And as we come, we all, all of us say thank you. All of, you, all of us say thank you. And I want to bring every need from every heart in here and out of here this morning. Whatever that need is, God, we have the faith like the centurion. You said in your word, without faith it's impossible to please you. So I ask you right now to give us the faith if you don't have it. 
as Jairia said, help my unbelief. I pray that you look in every heart right now. Where there's brokenness, you would bring healing. Where there's sickness, Lord, there's so many sicknesses, too difficult to mention them. Cancer, prostate cancer, stomach difficulties, mental disorder, blood disorder. God, there's so many people hurting. But we thank you for doctors and nurses, but you are the greatest doctor. We realize that there are some things that they cannot do. They have limitations, but there's no limitation with you. And so I ask in the precious name of Jesus that you will do some healing. Lord, let your power fall when your name is called. Let this generation know that you're the same yesterday, today as you were yesterday and will be. That you're still in a miracle waking business. Touch every heart. Go by every home. There are some people that are righteous. Some people with sugar problem, they with heart. There are people with eye problem and hair. There are people with so many different problems, God. The, the, the enemy seem to be getting the last laugh, but we know that's not true. You have a strange way of turning disappointments into appointments. And so, Lord, I am taking for granted that you have looked in every heart here and those in Zoom land, and you will meet those needs in such a way that you will get all the glory and honor. Please do it. Lord, there are too many broken hearts. Cover for me now, go on. to Grand Bahama, Lord. I pray for every home, every school, or children, or some of them go face to face and through virtual and other platforms. Remember them, God. Remember the government, all our political leaders, God. Give them wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and good health, that they'll make good decisions. Those in the health uh, ministry, those in social, those in finances, the most difficult times for them. Lord, I pray as elections soon be coming up next year, there's so many people leaving. I believe they realize that the strain may be too much. But I bring the Bahamas to you. Every man, woman, boy, and girl, and meet those needs. Please meet those needs. Where there's sickness, bring healing. Where there's bereavement, you bring comfort. Where there is lack. God, there's so many people unemployed. There's so many people with nothing. God, I thank you so much for the Red Cross and Great Commission, Salvation Army, and those hands for hunger, and those NGOs, Lord, I realize that you touch hearts. You have no hands, but the hands are nice. Bless us. Bless temple. Bless temple, Lord. I bless prayer for our students who are getting ready even to go away, make arrangements, those who need scholarships. I pray for those marriages, single parents, single mothers. I pray for young men. Too many of them, oh Lord, oh, I don't know what we are going to do. Our streets are covered with blood. I bring every young man to you. Please, God, do some healing. Touch their hearts. God, please. Please, there's too many wrong being done. I pray for protectors for our ladies. There have been a time they say there's so much abuse, raping. Please, cover our ladies in Temple Baptist Church. Our families. Every one of our female relatives and in-laws, cover them. Send your angels and be around them, God. Lord, I pray like this because I realize that prayers are normally said when in times of trouble. Although thank prayers can be thanksgiving and all that, but we're in trouble, God. And we need you. I pray for our church. I pray that we will love the way you love, Lord. I pray for unity among ourselves. I pray that when we interact with people, people will know that we have been with Jesus. I pray that we will not take for granted that we are Christians, but we act like Christians. I pray for a strange level of love and temple, providence, even essential and deeper. I pray for the blessing, even the meeting that we had, that things would be so wonderful this year. I pray for all those in leadership role. God bless them with supernatural wisdom and strength and good health. God meet needs. And Lord, as I end this prayer, 
Lord, you know, last night, I don't know why this came in my mind when they spoke about Dor Dor the storm, Dorian. I realized that the season of hurricane is soon coming. And you are blessed in my spirit. We need to pray that no storm of four and five level will come to new providence, God. We need your guide to take on the Sea of Galilee. Speak to the wind and the waves, God. We cannot take it. Right now, we are covering from several storms, and we need you. I hope each one of us in our own private life would pray for supernatural covering as the stormy season approaches, that we will have the assurance that you will spare us this time. Have mercy upon us, God, as we worship you. May we do it in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Pastor Moss. And um, now, as is usual on the days on which we observe the last day, the Lord's Supper, we have a medley of hymns. We're going to be singing two hymns, 145 and 147, the first and the last verse of each of those. 145 and 147.
This hymn is one written by Charles Wesley. It's called the Wesley's Conversion Hymn. It is said that on the 24th of May, he went to a service, and as the preacher talked about salvation, and he felt his heart strangely warmed, and he went home and he wrote this hymn, which he shared with his brother John and it has lasted, and it's still a hymn of great triumph for Christians. Bold I approach the eternal throne and claim the crown through Christ my own. Amen. I don't see Sister Denny's here. Sister Denny's, well, we are always, we're working against time, so let's see what we can do. In terms of, or is there anyone who would like to volunteer to come and do the announcements today? Or shall I just go ahead? All right, okay. Do we have any first time visitors? Or oh, Sister Annette, were you coming? I saw you rising. Thank you, Sister Annette. Oh, I have one up here. We're all trying to give of our best, eh? Amen. Amen. No problem. No problem. I've got the ticket. Okay. I will be Sister Denny's for today. That's no problem. It's good to be young again. A beautiful and a blessed good morning. good morning. If you are glad you're in the house of the Lord this morning, give the Lord the highest praise. The Lord didn't hear that. Let's do it again. Give him the highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is good. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. If you are worshiping with us for the very first time, could you please stand so that we can acknowledge your presence? I don't see any first time visitors, but I'm happy. Yes, we, we have some first time visitors. Then they need to stand for me, please. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. It's good to have you. Could you give me your name, please, sir? And if you wish, you can say your church home. Amen. Mr. Lewis and his son, it's good to have you. Uh, give him a round, round of applause. Oh. Mr. Lewis, our doors are always open. Whenever you're in this area, we are most honored to have you here visit with us. May the service be a truly a blessing to you. Thank you so very much. We also have in our midst, they're not first time visitors, but we haven't seen them for a little while, and we're glad to have them. We have Debbie. We have Stacy, of course we have Sister Gay, and we have our honored lady, Sister Anton. So it's good to have all of you here worshiping with us this morning. To God be the glory. And while I'm here, let me welcome each and every one of you, even those in Zoom land, to our service of thanksgiving and praise this morning. May your hearts truly be blessed. Please follow along in your bulletins for the announcements. We express our thanks to Reverend Denzel Kerr for challenging the ushers specifically and the church generally to be at our best at whatever we attempt to do for God. His message is on YouTube this week. And continue to pray for, Den for Reverend Kerr as he go forth in the vineyard. March and April, our stewardship and marriage enrichment month. Details will be forthcoming. Our prayer concerns, you're asked to continue to pray for all bereaved families. The administrators, teachers, staff, and children of the nation as they settle into their new arrangements in school continue to cover each and every one of those. Again, cover the government and health authorities as they receive the vaccine today and make plans for distribution and administration. 
We have plenty to keep in our prayers this week. Birthday greetings are extended to Lila Roll on the 5th, that's belated. Whitney Morse on the 7th. Stephen Williams, they didn't say the date for Mr. Williams. On the 9th, we have Linda Sims and Vanessa Williams. Happy birthday. Oh, yes. Giovanni Ramming, he celebrated his birthday yesterday. Which, today. All right, today. So let's wish him a happy birthday also. And if you don't get to see these persons, please cover them in your prayers as they celebrate another milestone. Congratulations to Rache Feast, who has completed her studies at the University of the Bahamas. Wow. Listen what she holds. She now holds an associate degree in law and criminal justice. Be careful. Law and criminal justice. And then she has a bachelor degree in psychology so she could figure out what you were planning. Rachel has done her parents and the church proud. Please put your hands together to congratulate Rachel in her absence. Brother Feast, tell Rachel we are really proud of her. She's so tiny to hold all of these heavy degrees. <laughs> to God be the glory. And then we need to bless you and Karen because it only came because of you too. So to God be the glory for all of you. Pastor elect Reverend Clinton Minnis will be installed as the pastor of Providence Baptist Church on Sunday, the 14th of March at 3.30 p.m. Please be much in prayer for pastor elect Minnis and the family of Providence Baptist Church. I don't think there are any other announcements at this time, so just wave and tell everybody I love you in Jesus' name as you smile. In Jesus' name. It's time for our scripture reading, which we are going to do together. It comes from Colossians chapter 1 and verses 19 to 29. If you are using your own Bible as soon as you have found it, you can stand. Reverend Carr suggested that we all bring our own Bibles, even though it's going to be up on the screen. So, and just reminding us. Colossians chapter 1, verses 19. 29. Has everyone found it? Can we say amen? Amen. All right. Let's begin. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the of Christ in my flesh for this body's sake, which is the church. Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which has been hidden from the ages and from generations. But now is 
made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of his mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man, and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect to Christ Jesus. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh which in me mightily, ending at verse 29. And we know that God is able to add rich, rich blessings to the reading of his word. We have special music, according to the program here by Sister Janesta. Are you here, Sister Janesta? Yes. Okay, we will be given a treat in a moment by Sister Janesta, who is coming to bless our hearts with special music. And then this is going to be followed by the message by our pastor, stay fortified. In other words, stay strong in Christ. Stay fortified in Christ. I trust you have worshipped this far, and you will continue to receive even more blessings as you hear the word. Good morning.
Thank you, Sister Janesta. Through it all, eh? Through it all. Is, is that just only Sister Janesta's testimony? Anybody here? Anybody else? And sharing that testimony through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. Amen. And there's been a lot that's been happening, that's been going on. And I'm so glad we've learned to trust in God. We praise Him. So good to be alive and be able to be in God's house this morning. And as Brother Grant usually say, it's better to be here than to be in doctor's air-conditioned hospital room, eh? <laughs> or anybody, anybody else, any other hospital room. We give God thanks. So very much, and so good to see all of you here today. Thanks to the musicians, and just thanks to everybody uh, for all that you've done, all that you've been uh, through it all, through it all. Sister Bevy, it's good to see you. We just want to, again, extend our condolences to um, you and the Curling family, and we know how much Brother Ed's mother meant to him. Um, so I tell him we, we're, in a, we're in a tie when it comes to that. Uh, that's the same way I saw my mother. So I understand how he how he felt. Anybody else who might be a guest this morning, we just want to say how delighted we are that you've chosen to be at Temple Baptist Church. This morning, I want to share some thoughts from the topic in the bulletin. It says, Stay 45 in Christ. Stay fortified in Christ. And um, this came from uh, Wednesday, our last Wednesday morning study, um, Bible study. I had done this for... Bible study, and um, after I'd done it, I, when I finished, I said, you know, I need to share this with some, a wider body, because there were just like six of us here, six of us, and so those who were here um, agreed, Sister Rhoda and some others, so I propose to share this with you this morning. A man named Epaphras, he was a minister in the church at Colossae, and he paid a visit to the Apostle Paul, who was in Rome, on behalf of the church. And while he was there, he brought the Apostle Paul up to date on the spiritual health of the church at Colossae. Colossae was one of three cities that was located in what they called the Lycus Valley. The Lycus Valley is on both sides of the um, Lycus River, or the, the Lycus River ran through the Lycus Valley. And each of those cities uh, was known for something special. One of them was known for its financial 
its finances. It was a financial base there, and so they had um, a lot of financial transactions and stuff going on in the area. The other one was known for its tourism, much like Bahamas. Tourism was flowing. But Colossi was known for industry. They specialize in textile. They bought wool, dyed it, and they made uh, cloth and the like from it. This was a quite a thriving business. However, like most thriving cities, Colossi got infiltrated by false teachers whose sole purpose was to discredit Jesus Christ as the human son of God and replace him with acquired knowledge in the form of philosophies and astrological teachings and such thoughts. And this resulted in the beginning of spiritual slippage. In other words, they started losing their spiritual fervor, their trust and dependence on the Lord Jesus Christ. And so Paul realized that if this was left, uh, left unchecked, the Colossian church, uh, if, they, if he did not do something about stopping, helping to stop the slippage, um, the church would be destroyed. So he wrote back with Epaphras, encouraging the church to stay fortified in Christ. That's a challenge, right? Yes. Stay fortified in Christ. Even though that has been thousands of years ago, I think we are also seeing some slippage in our society. Yes. Yes. There's some slippage across the board. Yes. The church. And like Paul, I want to encourage the church this morning, in particular those of us here at Temple, to become or to remain fortified in Christ. And if you're not fortified, become fortified in Christ Jesus. How are they? How are we? to accomplish this. And I propose three questions, and I want you to think seriously about them. I wish I had written them down and given them to Khadija. But the first one, ask yourself the question, who am I? Who am I? Do you really know who you are in Christ Jesus? Do you have an idea of your value in Christ Jesus? Who am I? The second question, this is a big one. What does God expect of me? God what, what God wants from me? What does he expect? And the third question, how am I to utilize God's revealed truth to me, God's mystery? How am I to utilize that? How, how am I to make use of that? And we just want to look at these three questions. So, Father, 
thank you so very much this morning for your presence. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you've done for us. Thank you for reminding us this morning that through it all, no matter what, we can depend upon you. You, you are a faithful God. You are a dependable God. You are a loving God. You're a kind God. You're a caring God. And so this morning, we come to hear from you. I pray, Father, that we will open our hearts so that you may pour into them your word that will keep us fortified in this difficult, topsy-toby, upside-down world. I got to ask that you'll touch my lips and you'll speak to me so that I may speak to your people. Lord, across so that I may speak from behind it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Who am I in Christ? Jesus. Firstly, in Christ Jesus, I am fortified. I am a spiritually fortified person. What do you mean by that? To be fortified means to be protected. It's like having a fort built around you. To be fortified means to be strengthened. Anybody feel strong? God becomes our strength. To be fortified means to be reinforced. Every time we seemingly get weak, God reinforces, he strengthens us anew. And so the Apostle Paul reminds the church at Colossae, I remind you this morning, that who we are in Christ, we are at peace with God through the blood of Jesus Christ. We're no longer at war with God. Yes. Sister Rhoda, we no longer have the wrath of God hanging over us. It's been removed through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's verse 20. Uh, we're looking at Colossians chapter 1, verse 19 through 29. And verse 20 tells us that we are at peace with God. And that peace has been brought about by the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood reconciles, takes factions and bring them together. I'm no longer an enemy of God. And God is no longer my enemy. We've been reconciled. He's my father. <laughs> He's my father. And I've come back home. Secondly, I am presentable before God. Having been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Wow. Before I was so raggy, so smelly, so messed up. I was not presentable. But once I'd been washed in the blood of the Lamb, I've become presentable. I can now be presented to God. Yes. Yes. Wow. Wow. 
I'm not who I used to be. The past is the past, and the past is gone, and let it go. So if anybody tries to remind you about your past, we all have bad, sordid past. But if anybody tries to remind you about the past, tell them you're talking to a different person. That person died. I'm now a new creature in Christ Jesus. Sometimes we don't behave like we know that's who we are. We let people intimidate us. However, being presentable comes with conditions. Look at verse 23 and 24. Paul said, this is so. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not what moved away from the hope. You can't go messing around now. God's moved you out of all that mess. Don't go back. That's how pigs behave, you know. You could dress a pig and wash him and all, put perfume on him and put a bow on him. And put him in the nicest house. And then if you leave the door open and there is a mud puddle down the road, off he goes. And he's a joy. Let's stay away from the mud. Stay away from sin. It's a condition. And be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven. Wherefore I, Paul, am made a minister who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ at my my flesh for for his body's sake which is the church. And what Paul is saying, you're going to go through some sufferings. That doesn't mean that because you know Christ, everything's going to be honky dory. No, you're going to go through some situations. In fact, sometimes it looks like it gets worse. But Paul said, rejoice in the suffering because you're on your way to heaven, eh? On your way to heaven. Not only are we at peace, not only are we presentable, but we are prepared and positioned for ministry. If you know Christ in the pardon of your sins, you have been designated a minister. God has both prepared and positioned you for ministry. That job you have, God wants you to be a minister there, even if just living right. That group you fellowship with, God wants you to be a minister there. You're a minister in your marriage, minister in your family. You're a minister everywhere you get an opportunity to be. You are a minister. Pastor Moss shared with us yesterday that COVID has really made him realize how much a minister he is. And now everywhere he goes, he just tells people about Jesus. Man, you should have been doing that a long time, but thank God for COVID. We all should have been doing that a long time. Thank God for COVID. But you're a minister. Don't let anybody look down on you. And that being a minister is more important than being a doctor or an accountant, a lawyer, or whatever else. You're a minister. You see, those things will go by the way. 
but you'll always be recognized as a minister. And the fourth thing is that you're a proclaimer of the gospel of Christ. That's what you minister. Let's tell people about Jesus Christ. It's easy to tell people about the weather, right? It's easy to tell people about COVID. It's easy to tell people about your sufferings and your trouble. But let's make it priority to tell people about Jesus. That's the only hope for mankind. Only hope for the country. Only hope for the world. And I thought I'd lost something here. The second question. What does God <clears throat> expect of me? What is my purpose here on earth? Have you ever asked God? God, why you put me here? Why you put me in the middle of China? Why didn't you put me in Africa? Why didn't you put me? Why didn't you put me in the U.S. and wherever? God has a purpose for your life. You're not running a mill person. You're special. If you know Christ, you are very special. He put you here, put me here to minister, to fulfill the gospel, to proclaim the good news to lost men, lost women, lost boys, and lost girls. You see, God is building a kingdom, and he expects you and he expects me to be engaged with him in getting it done. That's wonderful, you know, that God has invited you and invited me to be a part of the building of his kingdom that's going to reign eternally, going to last eternally. I'm, I'm delighted. Anybody else delighted that God has engaged you? Wow. Not just to minister... God expects you, expect me, to appreciate the privilege of being in Christ. Folk, that is a privilege to be in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the wonderful thing about it, you know, as I said on Wednesday, we are doubly in Christ. In heaven, we are in Christ. On the earth, Christ is in us. You got that? Christ in, uh, is in us. What a privilege. You and I have access to the revelation of the mystery that generations had hoped for but did not realize. From Adam, from Adam, people wanted to get back in good relationship with God. Adam messed things up, didn't he? And we continue to mess it up right along with him. Continue to be enemies with God. And generations and generations and generations looked forward to the day when they'll no longer be an enemy with God. When things can get right. But that didn't happen. 
until the coming of Christ. And so, Paul says, the mystery is Christ in you, the hope of glory. You got that? The mystery is that Christ in you and Christ in me is the hope of glory. God wanted to glorify you and glorify me. He was just waiting to do that. But he couldn't do it until Christ came and brought us together. So Paul says, God expects for you and for me to appreciate the fact that Christ in us is the hope of glory. And this has been revealed to all the saints of God. Everybody who has accepted Christ, that's been revealed to them. Christ in you is the hope of glory. That's verse 26 and verse 27. Romans 9 and 23 said that we have come into the riches of God's glory. We've been enriched in the glory of God. And 1 Timothy 1 and 1 said that Jesus Christ is our hope. Jesus Christ has given us hope. And then the last question, how am I to utilize God's revealed mystery in me, to me? That Christ in you is the hope of glory. What do I do with this information? I just take it and put it on a bushel, on a bucket. I just throw it down. What do I do with it? Verse 28 says, use it to preach, use it to proclaim, use it to witness the good news, put it to use, don't just sit on it, put it to good use. Secondly, verse 28, that's verse 28a, verse 28b said, one Every man, warn people, please warn people that the wages of sin is death. Do I need to say that again? Sin pays no other wages but death and destruction. And we've become so comfortable with sin, that we see people around us committing sin, and we don't say anything, we zip our mouths. It ain't my business. Yes, it's your business. Yes, yes. God's going to hold you and hold me guilty if we see people around us sinning, and we don't say anything to them. Yes, yes, yes. i got to warn them. Yes. No matter what they say, they might cuss us out. They might tell us about our ma. And somebody say, that's fighting. But we ain't going to fight. We're just obeying God. Don't let anybody sin around you and you sit up smiling with them, letting them think it's okay. It is not okay. Amen. You can live with the guy, marry him. Tell him if he can't marry you, go, you go home. In fact, don't go live with him. I got in trouble the other day. I told some people came to dedicate the second child. First one, the big boy. They're dressed to kill. Bow tie, suspenders. Man, matching stuff. 
Yo a ese, bueno, 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 bueno. What's going on here, man? Time out. You come here, bring this woman and this child for dedication. You should have been coming to get married first. Don't come back here with another child unless you come first with the marriage license so I can marry you. Boy, they left here angry, but I don't care. I don't care. I told you what the Lord needs me to tell you. And with a few young men that are on here today, don't take people's daughter for your pleasure. If she's good enough for sex, she's good enough for marriage. We get caught up in this terrible culture. Don't use other people's children. In fact, don't use God's children. Your, 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 your fleshly in-laws might not do much, boy, but when you got to face God for dealing with his children. How did I get on that? I don't know. Anyway. We, we need to tell people. We need to start telling little children. You know, that's something my mother told us. Don't use other people. Well, my other two brothers didn't hear too well, or they... <laughs> but, you know, I'm, they have... Anyway, we won't talk about that. <laughs> and you have, all, you have people in your family who yeah, don't care. Yeah, yeah. None, none of us can brag this morning. But please, tell your children first. Yeah. Tell your grandchildren. Yeah. Why, Sister Rhoda got on Megan the other day. So <laughs> Sister Rosa, I hope that's okay for me to say that, you know. Sister Rhoda, God on Megan. Megan, here's, here's a path that I want you to take. I want you to grow up and be a decent young lady. If somebody doesn't want you for their husband, they don't want you. The rest of us need to. Now, your children might do it, you know. Grandchildren might do it, you know. But at least whose conscience will be clear? My conscience. And I'm not getting down on those who might have done it, but we're, we're looking forward, right? We're looking forward. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> we need to warn. We need to teach every man with wisdom. You've got to get wisdom before you could give it, right? Yes. You can't teach with wisdom if you don't have wisdom. You've got to get it before you can give it. And James says, if you lack wisdom, do what? Ask, Ask God. Yes. God delights in giving wisdom, not just giving, and giving it in abundance. That's right. That's right. We can have a church full of wise people. Yes. Just ask. That's 28C. 28D said, way to utilize Christ in me, a hope and glory, is to present every man perfect in Christ. Present every man perfect in Christ. Forgive some time to give people a hand up. So often, when we see people in the ditch, we get a picture, take a picture, and what else do we do with that picture? 
on, so thank you, Sister Beverly. And look who I saw, John Red. Look at this. No. If you are in Christ, you're expected to take people by their hands and lift them up. And when they're higher than your hands can go, push them up. You're pushing them toward perfection. God's going to reward you for that. While you're lifting up somebody, somebody might be already lifting up your children. While you're lifting up somebody, somebody might be already lifting up your spouse. Somebody might be up there lifting up your mother, your grandmother. It's a lifting time. Let's engage in pushing people up and not putting them down. Amen. See, Satan loves to get us involved in putting folk down. He hates when you move up. He, he hates when God blesses you. Remember what he did to Job? See, God, you've been blessing Job, but you don't know Job. Job ain't a no good guy. That's what he wants to do to you. Tell God, God, you're going to bless an Andrew. You don't know Andrew, eh? Andrew's a no good guy. Blessing wood. Oh. But I thank God that God sees me. God knows me better than Satan. And God says, no. He's a new creature in Christ. Amen. New creature in Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll go off with that thought. Christ in you is the hope of glory. So if I can ask you to help people to around you to stay fortified, I would ask you to present every man perfect in Christ. Present everybody you know at their best, as we heard last week. Be your best. Help people to be their best in Christ. He says, this is only possible if you allow Christ to work in you. Open yourself to Christ. Let him come in. Let him work in you. Let him work through you. Let him work for you. And I say this morning, if you've been slipping, don't Slip any further. Call time out and put an end to the slipping. Rather, stay fortified in Christ. Can we just say that together? Stay fortified in Christ. Do I have any takers? Any takers that will be fortified? If you're going to stay fortified, just wave and let God. God, I'm one of those. I want to stay fortified. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. God, look at those people, those fortified people. Un undergird them, God. Undergird them, God. Meet their needs, God. Meet their needs. If they're sick, touch their bodies. Or let them know that your grace is sufficient. Bring home wandering children. Bring home wavered children. Thank you, God.
those who are employed, God, I know you're going to miraculously open a way. This week is going to be different from the last 52 weeks. You're going to make a difference. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Thank you. Be with hurting families, and the Bain Davis family, the Curling family, the Stirrup family, my friend uh, Match Williams's family. Be with them, God. Bring comfort, peace to them. Christ, the hope of glory. Thank you, God. We bless you. We praise you. We honor you, we glorify you, we magnify you. You are a good God, worthy, faithful. Keep us strong, strong, fortified, strengthened, reinforced. You are my strength, strength, oh, strength like no other creatures. Can you stand with me as a testimony of your strength? My strength.
of glory. Can you do that? Will you be honest with God this morning? Will you be honest with God? If you don't know Christ, you know, the preaching and the singing and stuff, that's good. But what's important right now is that we take you on a journey, a beginning of perfection, perfecting yes. you. And the beginning of that journey is to come and to give your life to Jesus. Anybody wants to do that? I'm just going to sing you my hope. Oh, you're my peace, son. You're my peace. Because that's what happens when we accept Christ. And if you need to come, give your life to Him. Please come as we just say, You are my peace. Will you come? Will you come? Christians are praying for you. And the Holy Spirit will strengthen you and encourage you. some slippage, however small it might be, and you need to be fortified, fresh. Will you come? I just want to pray for you. Give you three minutes. If you feel that there's been some slippage in recent times, and you want God to strengthen you, Thank you, you may be seated.